there's a level of frustration and despair that comes with seeing people, black and brown people, being gunned down. That attack on him is an attack on, on anyone. How can you trust how can you trust the police that smiles at you but will shoot your neighbor? Police brutality, police murder, police racism, it's just not going to be tolerated anymore. We deserve to be protected by the police. Black men do not deserve to be targeted and gunned down. Every time it happens, you want to hope that it's the last time, but then it's not. How do I feel comfortable knowing the people who are supposed to serve and protect are the same ones that are brutalizing you? Welcome back to The Ed Show. Protesters across the country joined the residents of Ferguson, Missouri, to express their frustration Thursday over the police-involved shooting death of Michael Brown. This latest instance of police brutality has renewed the focus on law enforcement policies that target African-American and minority men and women. One of the most notable is the NYPD's controversial stop-and-frisk policy. The New York Times op doc series spoke with one man who said he was stopped over 60 times before his 18th birthday. Joining me now is New York City Councilman Jumani Williams. Thank you for joining us here tonight, Thanks sir. Thanks for having me. So has the death of Michael Brown moved the conversation at all on police brutality? Uh, I think the death of, uh, of Michael Brown and Ferguson and Eric Gardner uh, in Staten Island, uh, and I want to give a shout out to Debbie Rose, my colleague over there who's doing a great job, uh, is at least bringing it to light. Uh, the problem is I think there are three things that we have to deal with in all of this, whether it's stop, question, and frisk, whether it's broken windows theory. Fundamentally, uh, we have to acknowledge there's a problem with the way we police people based on race and class. Mm -hmm. We have to deal with discretion of officers, and we have to deal with accountability, which is basically nil when it comes to shooting unarmed, particularly black men. And if we don't deal with those three things, honestly, any theory you put on top of that is going to fall into historical patterns. Right. So it, you know, it, we, we spend time fighting the abuse of stop question and fix. Now people are dealing with broken windows theory. But you do all of that, and if you don't deal with the cultural shift that needs to happen, then you can put the best police policy on top of that. We're going to fall into historical patterns. And I'm really hoping, uh, like in the 60s, uh, the television, the advent of television, really showed us what was happening. And now with the advent of the cell phone video, I think the same thing is happening now. And I think it's hard for people to ignore that race and class is an issue here. And if you ignore it, it's a problem. And I think even in New York City, there's still a reluctance to say that. And if you don't validate people's experience, how do you take the next step forward? That's a very good point. Uh, Sherilyn Eiffel, who is the uh, head of the NAACP Legal and Defense Fund, uh, suggests that there's a culture that we have to deal with here uh, within that pervades police departments across America. So do you see a relationship between that culture to which she refers and the over-policing of minority communities? Oh, 100 percent. And we have, uh, just throughout the nation's history, have over-policed 
black and brown communities, and we, we try to use excuses to do so. But you look at uh, what broken window theories go after, and I don't actually, the theory itself makes sense, but again, it's the application. Uh, so between 2008 and 2011, per year in Park Slope, let's say, uh, where you have eight, nine, ten a year people getting summons for bicycles, primarily white neighborhood, in bed -Stuy, the same time period, over 2,000. Mm -hmm. uh, you look at the marijuana arrest, where we know at least people use it the same, but black and brown people get it the most. Yeah. I do know that uh, you look at the heroin epidemic, uh, and the social response to that was uh, police now carry antidotes for heroin overdose. Right. And the way we do these things, it's amazing, and people act as if it's not race and it's not class. And if, if we don't get to the core of that and say we have to do a cultural shift, no amount of retraining, no amount of anything is going to deal with that. We, we shouldn't be afraid to do and say what we know is happening and can see what's happening. And until we do that, what's the point? We, we call for new commissioners. We call for the dismantling of theories. If we don't get to the heart of it, if we don't validate people's experience and say we have done this wrong, right. we are now going to correct it, what do you expect to happen? So that's interesting. So they carry antidotes for the heroin because now they treat those citizens as human beings yes. who have an addiction as opposed to criminalizing them. Do you think there's an over-criminalization of African-American and Latino people such that people don't believe that there is any kind of possible way out of uh, the, the morass we find ourselves in except for over-policing? So we, even with the violence model, uh, and I've said it before, when the violence was of a different complexion, uh, the elite at that time said, well, these people need jobs, they need education. And so right. all the programs that came out were to give people jobs and education. Right. And when it happened to us, as Dr. Muhammad says from the Schomburg, they said, the social elite said they're victims of their own self-destruction. Right. Uh, they're killing each other as animals. And that same thing didn't happen here. So I'm happy to say that at least uh, Mayor de Blasio uh, took a lot of, of, of the recommendations from the Gun Violence Task Force, our co-chair, and uh, Melissa Mark Verrito, and we're actually moving that direction Right. Uh, when it comes to New York City, which I'm excited about. And I hope the nation watches what's going on here. But as a nation, if we don't acknowledge the truth, we're not going to be able to move forward. All right, Councilman Jamani Williams, thanks so much for your time tonight. That's the edge.